Welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast, the photo imaging industry's leading news source. Here's your host, Gary Peugeot. The Dead Pixel Society podcast is brought to you by Photo Finale, Media Clip, Advertech Inc., Got Photo, IQ, Photobook AI, the IPI Member Network, and MailPix. Retail doctor who's joining us from upstate New York. Hi, Bob. How are you today? I'm doing great. Glad to be with you, Gary. So, Bob, you've been around as a consultant to the the pro group for many, many years and have some deep insights into the retail channel. And you've provided some resources to the industry on how to come out of the COVID crisis. Can you share some insights along those lines? Well, I think you've got to, your listeners have to understand that we've all collectively gone through this giant break of trust and that uh, we have to put the world back together again. You know, government is going to isn't going to uh, protect you, public health, wear a mask, don't wear a mask, wear this mask, don't wear that mask, won't wear it for you, wear it for them, uh, master effect. It's like, what? And even guidelines coming from states and counties and cities and even within uh, trade groups, uh, it's really hard. I know that uh, I think Jay Crew's playbook is 78 pages that they were trying to put out that people should follow to, uh, you know, be able to adjust with COVID and that's just unrealistic. And even the trust that somebody in your family could come home and suddenly bring death with them is a new thing. So I think it's really important for your listeners to understand that that's going to take a lot more than a discount or a coupon to get them back. Uh, Bike stores have been doing particularly well. There've been some other uh, hobbies that have done well. And, uh, and yet a lot of them are, selling out of the entry level because their employees are selling from their own wallets. They don't have the, you know, they're worried about their future. They're worried about if the business is going to be around. They were furloughed. There's a lot of reasons, but the big danger that has always been the same for uh, photographic uh, retailers, photography retailers, and that's you assume that the reason I came in today was to buy the one thing I ask you for. And frankly, if that's the case, I could have gotten it online. That's the mistake most of you make, is you assume that because I asked for that, that's all I wanted, and you say anything else. But if I just needed that, you know, think of when you buy a cartridge for your printer, Mm -hmm. you're not going to go in and say, oh, I'm going to go down to Staples. I'm going to try to get that guy to get his little scrunchie of risk of keys and unlock it and and buy it. You don't. You're just like, well, that's all I need. But, But when you go in the store you're open. And that's the thing that 90% of the customers that walk in your door haven't changed. They're open to discovery and to be wowed, to be merchandised and to have a professional salesperson sell them more for their photographic needs than just asked and answered. And if you get that and you're listening to this, that's going to take training and it's going to take a different attitude from you about what customer service is. So you spoke about trust. Can you kind of expand on that a bit about what today's consumers are looking for when it comes to that sort of relationship with retailers? Because it seems to be like with so much volume being shifted to Amazon, uh, there's been a a break in that trust, I guess, is the way I would term that. Is that correct? I need a little help on that. Where's the break between Amazon and... No, no, between the consumer and and, and, and their local retailer. Right? Uh, I don't believe that. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> At the no, end of the great. day, no. look, people went to Target and Walmart and Amazon because everybody else was closed. Right. You okay. know, this. the digital natives are going to tell you that everyone's going to be online and no one's going to shop at a store and we're all getting coal for Christmas and no Santa Claus. And, (laughs) you know, it's just not true. They've got this window to push that narrative. Um, Mm -hmm. People have cabin fever. We're seeing it even as just yesterday, Macy's expected only 20% of people back in the last week, uh, sales of 20% and they were already at 50% and other department stores are are reporting similar Mm -hmm. gains. So in the near term, yes, it's going to be, you know, there's people that are not going to shop simply until there's a vaccine and they're adamant about it. And yet most of the world, whether you like it or not, has moved on. And whether there's a spike in cases in Florida and Texas and other places, the world has moved on. We did it. We've locked. I'm in New York. 
I've literally been locked down for three months now, which I could not imagine uh, when that happened that it would really go till June. Right. So understand that anyone that walks into your store is really raising their hand in, in hope. I want to get back out there and photograph birds. I want to get my kids. I want to go on vacation. There's a million reasons. And if you're going to sit there and be sorry that you were closed for two or three months and bitter, and don't get me wrong, I get it. Photography uh, retailing sucks. M margins are being pushed and people are going online. The big boys are getting bigger. It's hard to find uh, good employees. Uh, fill in the blank. And mm -hmm. yet you're still doing it. So right. why not just shut the hell up and enjoy it and make mm -hmm. my day when I walk in the door instead of trying to get rid of me? Mm -hmm. Because that's the big mistake. I didn't walk into an online store. I walked into your store. So right. how are you going to get me to drop my guard, to trust you, to look at, to consider something I may not have, and ultimately compare and contrast it and buy more than I came in for? That's all that matters for you. And how many... People walked out your door without somebody buying it today. If that doesn't keep you up at night, I don't know what should, because frankly, the rest of it is garbage. The rest of it's politics. The rest of it's all kind of what if, oh my God, what if, oh, what if I got a flat tire? A million <laughs> things. I think of that line from uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show when you, I don't know if you ever saw it in person, Gary, but uh, Brad turns to Sarah and Sarandon and he says, if only we hadn't gone the down this long road and the audience shouts back but you did if only we hadn't but you did well that's kind of the same thing you know right looking backwards is not going to help you remember your customers are looking forward mm -hmm. forward is hope and if you can't rally that then then you have serious problems you better shut up and not call mm -hmm. your other buddies and find somebody who can mm -hmm. help you see the future because that's all anyone's going to buy right now they don't want your sob stories. They don't want to hear mm -hmm. how COVID is this and that and how worried you are. That's all about you. And frankly, I can get enough of that on the news. So right. understand, especially if you're a high-end retailer, I get it. There's a few big players. I get it. I understand it. doesn't matter. I get the whole dating with camera bodies. I get all of it. But at the end of the day, either you enjoy working with people and sharing that joy of photography or you don't. And if you do, mm -hmm then now is the time for you to rise as your competitors fall away and you, maybe you're the last man standing in your town. Great. At least you're the one that's doing it because right. you're listening and you're thinking, wow, I need to get my act together. Yeah. And there seemed to be some sort of, I think there was a, some response where some people were kind of using their, the COVID kind of exposed some of their perhaps weaknesses in their approach and they've closed their doors or shut down where others I think have sort of, you know, like you said, risen to the challenge. And what kind of messaging do you think retailers should be using now? I mean, you mentioned before, you know, don't coupon, don't, you know, that sort of thing is not necessary. What kind of messaging do you think consumers want to hear from their local photo retailer? It's all going to come back to being transparent and being authentic. So mm -hmm. escape the news with us. Let's <laughs> get back to your life. Let's mm -hmm. find a reason. Let's capture hopeful in a moment in time. It's going to be everything that a Kodak ad used to be 40 years ago and that feeling of nostalgia, but that feeling of time is precious. Right. And that's what I would expect you to be able to do. And I would expect that your feed should be full of that instead of this weekend only 50 bucks off on some offer like you did. And it was 1970. Things have changed. And let's, mm -hmm. You know, the the other one in the room right now is uh, the demonstrations going on for social justice. Are you going to take a stand? Are you not going to take a stand? Are right. you actively working to change the world? If you're actively working, are you willing to, to talk about that or not? I mean, these right. are bold times right now. And um, I think 2020, we've come through an awful lot. So mm -hmm. let's look at who are the people that are responding to this building a Star Trek world and realize that they are loyal and they're going to help you in mm -hmm. your, in your marketing and your social media. And we haven't even gotten to murder Hornets yet. <laughs> Talk about the greatest clickbait of 2020. My <laughs> goodness. Yeah, so, exactly. So you've been able to provide some resources, uh, 
to the industry. Can you kind of go over that and maybe tell people where they can uh, get more information? You can always go to retaildoc.com uh, and you can certainly find a lot of my resources there. You'll be able to sign up for uh, my free co retailing the time of COVID where we talk about how to use social media, how to greet customers, how to make it all uh, better, understand that you're going to have to clean things better than ever. Um, also, SalesRx is my online retail sales training program. If you are committed to doing a better job and mm -hmm. you're tired of just hiring hobbyists, and you really want to hire people that can actually move your merch. You know, I had a, a new customer the other day and he made the greatest uh, comment. I says, why'd you get sales or X? He goes, well, I can sell anything, but the rest of my employees can just be nice. And I thought that was great because he said, you know, friendly isn't really that hard. Right. But getting them to actually take that friendliness and be able to sell it makes a difference. So that... And, uh, you know, certainly follow me on Facebook. I do a Facebook Live every uh, sad Sunday morning. I've done it for three years where I answer your questions and join me on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would be hard pressed not to be able to find the <laughs> retail doctor online, Gary. There you go. So you work with other industries, right? Besides, yep. besides photography. What are some of the things you've been able to... Uh, bring over from other industries into photography that would be relevant to photo retailers? I think the hardest thing for specialty retailers who carry premium products, and that would be photography retailers uh, along with jewelers and uh, bicycle companies and uh, I can't think of them all right now, is the idea that product knowledge is all that matters. Right. And if it was 1960, you would be right. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only place I could have gotten product knowledge was to come to you. Right. I hate to tell you, but things changed. All that product knowledge is online right now. Mm -hmm. And when I'm on Facebook, somebody else's ad is telling me something. And I'll believe that because it's in front of me. Mm -hmm. So this idea that product knowledge will save you just isn't true anymore. Mm -hmm. All that you can do is to be able to make your employees day and get them the hard skill, the soft skills of getting someone to, to actually trust you as a trusted advisor. And if you make your employees day, they'll make the customers day. But the days of, you know, kind of treating people like crap and, um, and then saying, go sell this stuff or make your quotas or you'll be gone and all of that. I think those days are gone and you're going to have to set, you're going to have to be able to share the rewards in some way that uh, isn't just commission based and really realize um, that everything that got you here is all table stakes. It might've been unique for you, but where you need to go is to say, what is my mission? Why do I exist to just mm -hmm. say, well, I exist to make a profit. That's not what a rallying cry is. Right. So, right. So, you know, if you think of um, uh, Martin Lindstrom, he was on my podcast recently and he said, so what's the safest car company in the world? Do you know it? What, Subaru? What would you say, Gary? Subaru? Oh, it's actually Volvo, but okay. Subaru would be a close second because they own it. That's kind mm -hmm. of it. They, mm -hmm. they own it. And well, that's right. Subaru loves you. <laughs> is that it? And Subaru loves you. Volvo is safer. That's right. Volvo has always been safety. In fact, they have made the claim this year that no one will die in one of their cars this year. I mean, that's pretty amazing after all the things that they have pioneered. They're known for safety. Right. What are you known for? We're known for great deals. You mm -hmm. know what? There's always somebody cheaper, kids. Right. Always. Yeah. So this idea that you know, I can't mark things up because my customers will notice that customers are, is probably not even there. You know, the customers that are going to notice five bucks, right. 10 bucks here and there, they're already online. Right. But if you need more to be able to, to, to exist, what are the soft things besides just classes? What are the different ways that you can do virtual selling? What are the different ways you can be involving this tribe in many ways to keep them connected to your brand? because the, the store is the hub everything comes from, but you've gotta be just really clear. It's not just selling this widget, it's building this tribe of followers around you who can really support you, and that takes a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's almost easier to uh, give a salesperson a sell sheet with some specs and what the spiff is and 
let them go to town rather than try and, like you said, inspire them to share that enthusiasm with the customer. Yeah, because if they're not, if they're not enthused about it, you know, one of my, my pet peeves, Gary, I have to say it. So when I first rolled out Sales RX probably six years ago, we had some photography dealers on it and they took issue with me saying, I only want you to sell one add-on at a time. And like, we can't do that. We have to get them to buy everything at once. It's like, no, you can't. I've, I've bought several cameras and give me a laundry list. You know, I'm looking for a camera. Okay, well, you're going to need a battery and you're going to need a filter and you're going to need a memory card and then you're going to need to hold it. I haven't even picked out the body yet. Right. But right, you right. so catastrophize it to me that I go, screw this. Too many decisions to make. I'm out. So I want to be very clear, just because you've always done it doesn't make it right. Mm -hmm. Get the camera body locked down. That's the most important thing. From there, go to the lens. From there, go to your memory card, whatever it's going to be. From there, have a sequence. Right. But don't give me your laundry list because invariably we're going to say, okay, I'll think about that. I get home. I know I need these other seven things. Where am I going to order them from, Gary? Right. I'm not going to order. come back to you because right. you made buying difficult. You made it a stressful event. I don't right. want to do that. So look at your sales process. If you still arm yourself with this is the way we've always done it, God love you. Go for it. But I can tell you the world is littered with businesses that have gone out recently because they were still stuck in the past and armed themselves with well, this is what we've always done. And, and John knows everything about cameras. John may know everything about cameras, but he may not have a clue how to talk to me like he was talking to a buddy over Starbucks. Right. And unless that guy is rewarded, instead of this guy, I think you're going to have a really tough way out of 2020 because I don't need to be made to feel small or stupid or overwhelmed. I need to feel like I'm trusted and I feel better for having met you. And that's, that's going to take a, a retooling of the photography industry, I think. I think that you've hit on a great point because I've seen that more than once where I've, I've seen articles on like Petapixel or something about like this camera store has gone out of business. And s almost s every time there will be a comment in the comment section where somebody says, you know, I shopped at that store and the people there were so arrogant you know, they thought they knew everything and talked down to me and I never went back there again. It's a big thing in photography stores, I'm telling you. You know, I, I may not be the most popular speaker at Pro and, <laughs> and I get that. I'm not here. I don't give a damn. I'm not here to be your friend. You don't call me and tell me how it sucks to be you because mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to tell you what your friends aren't going to do, which is get your butt out there. You know, I uh, make no mistake my speaking schedule is clear now for the rest of the year. And my choice was either I sit here and wallow in it or I go out and I be value and I have to talk to each of my customers and say, here's what I can do for you and develop right. that relationship. Is that what you're, are you willing to fight for your business? If mm -hmm. so, then you're going to have to look at every one of your employees and say, are they adding or taking away the experience of my customers? Because just because old Joe has been there for 40 years and knows everything does it mean he's the best guy to sell to a millennial who is out there and might say, well, you know, I'm out on the protest and I want to take pictures. Oh, well, on the protest, I wouldn't do that. Dude, you can't say that. Right. Yeah. But why not? Because she's obviously into it. And so our goal is how do we grow the pie? How do we get more people to come to the table? Mm -hmm. Whether you're old or young isn't the issue. Are you curious about learning something new and being curious about the person that walks in instead of just push, pushing yourself up and saying, oh, I know everything about, you know, um, tripods or I know everything about filters. Right. Your whole thing should be, let's just try this. Let's see. Let's see it together like a running buddy. Let's just see if this works mm -hmm. instead of, no, you can't. I'm the one that knows, right? So with that in mind, you know, as, as, as you know, people, as retailers are bringing people back from furloughing or rehiring them, this may be actually be a chance to refresh their, uh, their store staff, if you will. I, I've said it before, you don't want to be, re, it's easy to unlock the store. It's harder 
to build trust back with your employees, with your customers. And so instead of thinking of just, we're going back to business, think about starting a new business. Right. You can start a new business, you know, that employee that you don't like working with, <laughs> you just think like, oh dear God, do I have to work with that guy? Why do you feel that way? And have you made it known? And now is your time to say, we're starting a new business. I expect the attitude of this. This is our mission. This is what we're out to do. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to include sales training. I don't want to hear anybody bitching about it. I want them to take it. I'm going to hold you accountable to it. Are you with me or not? Well, I don't know. That sounds like an awful lot. Yeah, I'm with you. Great, dude. You've got 40 hours. Mm -hmm. But we aren't because we want to be complacent. And I'm telling you that the complacent retailers are the ones who are filing uh, bankruptcy chapter 11 and closing stores because they can't figure it out. Retail is easy to figure out. It's called being brilliant on the basics. It's called finding your niche and then over executing every single time. And you know what? That's a lot of work, Gary. And if you're in for it, you can still live the life that you want. But if you're not and you're tired of it and you want to just sit and bitch and moan about it, no one is going to hear that story. Nobody wants to hear it. They don't want you calling them on the phone and saying how slow it is. They don't want you giving a pity party because this life is too short. We just learned that in the last three months. There mm -hmm. aren't going to be another thousand people walking in the door next month. For all we know, something else is going to happen. All we have is right now, and all you have is your four walls. So why not make an exception? Great. Well, listen, uh, Bob, I appreciate your time. Again, how can people uh, reach you? Specific how, what would be your preferred method for people to reach you? Well, I'm not passionate about the subject of retail at all. No, sure you can not tell. at all. So, no. um, yeah, I mean, you could certainly send me an e email, bob at retaildoc.com, doc.com. Uh, or check out salesrx.com, which is 120 lessons on how you can actually engage a stranger, discover the shopper, and yes, make the sale. And if you're willing to change, I am the guy to help you. And uh, I would hope that you realize that the only way that's going to happen is if you keep looking forward and finding the future and finding the hope. And if you do that, we're going to get through this just fine. So where can people see you? You said you've got some, you said you've, uh, you have a well, Facebook my own YouTube live. channel. You can sort of go to YouTube, the okay. retail doctor. You could certainly go to Facebook, the retail doctor. You could find me there, but uh, I also have videos on the site of retaildoc.com. You can see as well. And, uh, uh, yeah, again, you could do a Google search. I am not a hard guy to find. <laughs> Great. Well, listen, appreciate your time and, uh, look forward to seeing you hopefully at a future pro event. That sounds great. Thanks, Gary. Yep. Thank you for listening to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. Read more great stories and sign up for the newsletter at www.thedeadpixelssociety.com.